Welcome to Nice Instructional Videos. In this video, the process of applying a strain gauge to steel rebar is shown. Many steps of the procedure are the same as the steps required to apply a strain gauge to any metal specimen. First, here is a list of the materials required. Metal grinder. A compressed air grinder is used in this video. If the surface at the desired location of the strain gauge is already relatively smooth, a metal grinder is not required. Sandpaper. Coarse and fine. Cleaning solutions. Acidic and basic. Kim wipes. Strain gauge. Plastic sheets that come in the box of strain gauges. Glue. A post yielding glue is best for steel if the steel is expected to yield. Epoxy. Tar. Silver tape. Zip ties. Strain indicator. Alligator clamps. In this procedure, the ridges on the steel rebar are removed at the desired location of the strain gauge. Also, the surface of the rebar at that same location is smoothed to ensure a clean bonding surface for the strain gauge. When preparing the surface for strain gauging, a smooth surface extending about halfway around the rebar is desired. When smoothing the surface, try not to gouge into or take away much of the actual rebar. If material is taken away, the location of the strain gauge will have a slightly greater stress and the strain reading will be less accurate. When preparing the surface for strain gauging on steel without ridges or on a specimen of metal other than steel, the hand sanding procedures shown next are sufficient to achieve the surface desired for bonding. In this procedure, the smooth surface is slightly roughened to ensure a good bonding surface for the strain gauge. When sanding the surface, start with coarse sandpaper and finish with fine sandpaper. Use a crisscross sanding pattern to create a bonding surface for the strain gauge. The amount of sanding shown is sufficient to create the bonding surface and not remove too much material. If the strain gauge location is not relatively smooth before beginning this procedure, more hand sanding may be required. In this procedure, the surface is cleaned to ensure a good bond between the strain gauge and the steel. When cleaning the surface, start by using the acidic solution. This is a weak acidic solution, so gloves are not required. Wipe the surface with the acidic solution until there is no dirt picked up by the Kim wipe. Use one swipe as well as a clean part of the Kim wipe each time. Finally, make one wipe with the basic solution to neutralize the acid. In this procedure, glue is applied to the strain gauge, and the strain gauge is attached to the specimen. The first thing to note is the strain gauge has a top and a bottom. The top has the actual strain gauge metal, and is where the lead wires come out of the strain gauge. The bottom has a plastic surface. Make sure to apply the glue to the bottom of the strain gauge. 
Cover the bottom of the strand gauge with glue. Using a plastic sheet to protect your hand from the glue, place the bottom of the strain gauge on the prepared location and press down firmly with your thumb on the top of the strain gauge. Make sure your thumb is covering the entire strain gauge as you press down to ensure each corner of the strain gauge is glued. Keep pressing down for a few minutes to give time for the glue to set. In this procedure, an epoxy coating is applied to the strain gauge for protection. First, remove the plastic sheet. Apply the epoxy to the entire strain gauge. Cover the lead wires as well. Allow approximately 15 to 20 minutes for the epoxy to dry properly. If the specimen is a bare metal specimen, the epoxy coating is sufficient protection for the strain gauge. In this procedure, tar and silver tape are prepared to be applied once the epoxy is dry. Cut two pieces of tar for each strain gauge. One piece should be large enough to cover the strain gauge and the other should be slightly smaller. Cut a piece of silver tape large enough to cover the strain gauge. The tar and tape give the strain gauge some protection for when the concrete is being poured. This procedure may be done while the epoxy is drying. In this procedure, the tar and silver tape are applied to the strain gauge and the strain gauge application process is completed. This procedure is done after the epoxy is allowed 15 to 20 minutes to dry. First, pull the lead wires out of the epoxy to ensure they are not touching the rebar. Be very careful not to pull them off the strain gauge or the strain gauge will be ruined. Use a tweezers if necessary. Place the smaller piece of tar underneath the lead wires. The tar should cover the rebar the full length of the lead wires or from the strain gauge to the shielded wire. Stretch the tar piece if necessary. Press the shielded wire firmly into the tar piece. Press the lead wires into the top of the tar piece making sure the lead wires do not touch each other. Place the larger piece of tar over the strain gauge, lead wires, and the end of the shielded wire. Stretch the tar piece if necessary. None of the strain gauge or lead wires should be showing. Place the silver tape over the large tar piece. Use a zip tie to secure the shielded wire near the strain gauge location. Make sure to give some slack in the wire as added protection for the strain gauge if the wire should get pulled somehow. That completes the strain gauge application process. In this procedure, the completed strain gauge is tested to make sure it works. Some optional things to consider are labels and securing the shielded wire. A quarter bridge strain gauge is used in this video. The strain indicator shows diagrams of the setups required for different bridge lengths. For a quarter bridge strain gauge, plug the red alligator clamp into the red P plus spot. Plug a black alligator clamp into the white S negative spot. Plug the second black alligator clamp into the yellow D120 spot. Connect the red alligator clamp to the shielded wire with a blue stripe. Connect the black alligator clamps to the other two shielded wires in any configuration. If the blue striped shielded wire is not connected to the P plus spot, the strain gauge will not work. 
Make sure none of the wires or alligator clamps are touching each other or the strain gauge will not work. Turn the strain indicator on by pressing the green run button. If the strain gauge is working properly, the strain indicator will show a relatively steady value with not much change. If the strain indicator reading is jumping around, flashing, or flashing zeros, the strain gauge is not working. In this case, check the strain gauge troubleshooting guide. If there are many strain gauges to keep track of, a good labeling scheme can save a lot of time. Tape such as masking tape or duct tape, or zip ties make good labels. You may also wish to secure the shielded wire in some way. In the case of rebar, the shielded wire can just be taped to the rebar close to the strain gauge. In other cases, the shielded wire could be taped or secured in some other way near the strain gauge.